Hello friends and welcome to the Southern Mountain Kitchen. Today we're making my version of garlic butter steak bites. So everything you see on my counter is what we're going to use to make this. There are quite a few ingredients, but the flavor that comes out of this with all the seasonings and all the ingredients is wonderful. So I think you're going to like this. So we're going to start out with a large pan, which we're adding a teaspoon of olive oil. You can add a little bit more if you want to, to this. And then we're going to add beef to it, which you can get any kind of cut of beef steak, whatever you want. I had about three cups worth of meat here. Um, you could add more if you wanted. This is just as much as I would need for what I wanted to make. So it's kind of your decision how much you add into it. But we want to cut this up into cubes. And get it in your pan. Mix it with a little bit of oil. And then you're going to add a half a teaspoon of Italian seasoning. One teaspoon of salt. A fourth of a teaspoon of pepper. And then when you get this all in, we want to actually mix this up, get the oil mixed through the seasonings and get them all all over the beef as much as we can to make sure it's really coated. And that way it actually has everything kind of sticking to it when it's cooking. And then to this, we're going to add one tablespoon of Worcestershire sauce, which again, we're going to mix this up and get this going. Now you're going to want to cook this for a while. I would say anywhere from six to eight minutes because you want to make sure that this is cooking through and it's at least medium done or more. But you want to flip it back and forth as you go to make sure you're browning all the sides of the beef. So if I were you, i put it in there, let it cook for about four minutes, and then flip it. And it'll come out looking something like this. Now once this is done, we're going to end up removing this from the pan. Because we're going to put this to the side and use the pan to mix up other ingredients before we bring the beef back. Now we're going to add about four tablespoons of butter to our pan and melt this. And once you get it pretty much melted, then we're going to add in the equivalent of six cloves of garlic, which you can use minced, crushed, whatever you want to use. I used mince in mine. Make sure you don't miss any of it. Get it into the pan. And then we're going to add a fourth of a teaspoon of red pepper flakes. And then we're going to mix this up. And you want to keep cooking this for a couple of minutes until you really smell the garlic. That way you know that it's ready for the next ingredients to go in. So I give it at least two minutes or so. And then after this, you are going to add in some cut up onion, which we're going to break it up into rings. So you could use about a third of a cup of onion or whatever. It's not a whole lot of onion. You just want the rings in there to give it some flavor. So go ahead, mix this up with everything that's in the pan. And we're going to let this saute for just a couple of minutes. So that way the onions start to actually do their thing. Probably the onions, what you want them to be. You're going to do this for two to three minutes. Then we're going to add our mushrooms to it. And then we're going to let it saute some more afterwards. So give it at least three minutes. And once we're ready for our next ingredient, we're bringing in our mushrooms, which is about a cup and a half worth. And these are cut up in decently large hunks of mushroom because we don't want them to cook down to nothing. We really want the actual pieces of mushroom. And we're going to saute this again with the onions. I'd say three minutes, four minutes if you want to. Just make sure that they're pretty much cooked through. Now once we notice that they are cooked enough and we're ready, we're going to return our beef to the pan. And once it's in there, we're going to mix it through with the onions and the mushrooms, get everything incorporated, and we're going to let it cook for at least another three to four minutes. So that way all the flavors get a chance to mix together and everything just mixes through to have this great, wonderful taste. So go ahead and stir it up as you go over this couple of minutes here just to make sure that everything is mixed through thoroughly. And when you're done, it looks something like this. And this has the best taste, and I really enjoy eating this, and I hope you will too. 
I hope you liked this video, and if you did, please like and subscribe. And if you get a chance, check out my cookbooks, which are available in bookstores worldwide. The first is about everyday cooking. The second is all about baking. Have a great day.